Ja. Come on in, take a seat, take a, nice a seat. Find a seat, get comfortable. Come on, come on, come on, come on in. Everybody have a seat, have a seat. Come on in, find a seat, find a seat. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, got some more people coming in. Come on, find your seats, find your seats. All right, all right. There we go, there we go. Some more kids, come on, y'all. Everybody's sitting over here. No one's over here. Hey, y'all, find a seat, find a seat. Let's go, let's go. Hey, I hope you guys are excited for this Fiesta Rally night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what, what, what kind of food do we got tonight? What we got kind of some, food? We got some Taco Bell for you guys. We got some Taco Bell Taco crispy Bell. tacos. Taco Bell <laughs> soft tacos. All some right, ground right. beef and cheese, baby. Do you want to spice it up? Spice it up with some mild sauce or, Let's go. or fire sauce? My personal favorite. Oh my gosh, they just keep hey, rolling in. Hey, we got some more kids. Come hey, on, come on over seat, here. Come on over here. Space up. Space Sit right up. there. Trust me, you're going to want to get some so front OCD. row seats. Fill in these front <laughs> rows. Come on, y'all. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. You're not going to want to miss this. Come on, y'all. Little Bass Pro. Houston All Astros right. fan. Oh my Dang. gosh. Bunch of cheaters in the room. All right. Well, I'm now kidding. that you guys are finally seated, we're gonna get started with our game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay so what? I, I think we, I think we got like spoons and eggs and like. Yeah. So basically, if you can see on the stage, we have here some cones, okay? And our contestants have spoons, and they're gonna have it in their mouth like this, and they have an egg. I have my egg. They have an egg, and they're gonna put it on their spoon. So contestants, you guys can come on up. Come on up. Whoa, that's bright. Okay. Dang. All right, come on, come on, come on. Come All on, guys. Right, we come got on. Our contestants up on stage. All right, so we got a boys team, we got a girls team. Boys, can we make some noise? Okay, right, girls, come on, let's make some noise. There we go, there we go. I think we already know who's about to win this game. So, basically. Oh, is this egg your egg? Egg me, yeah. Basically, they have some egg on their spoon, okay? They are going to zigzag through these cones. Come back, put the egg on the other person's spoon, and keep going, and first team to finish wins. But yeah. if you drop the egg, there's a candy in it. If you drop it and it does not crack, all you have to do is stand still, pick it up, put it back on, and keep going. But if it cracks open and the candy falls out, you have to go back and start over. Oops, I moved the cone. Cheater, cheater. I'm putting cheater. it back. Hey, hey. You have to go back and start over, not the whole relay, but just your turn. Okay. 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 All right. So who do we got over here? Girl, what's your name? Emily. Emily. Awesome. Make some noise for Emily. There we go. What's your name? Naomi. Naomi. Make some noise for Naomi. All right. What's your name? Juliana. Jul. What? Juliana. Juliana. Make some noise for Juliana. All right. All right. All right. What? Who? Who do we got over here? Let's... Ivan. <laughs> Diego. Diego. Go Diego. Yeah. My name's Isaac. Let's go, Isaac! Come All on! Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay. All right, guys, we're gonna need a little bit more enthusiasm started. than that. Okay. Okay, right. you guys are on that cone over there. All right, you ready? Here's your egg. Three. All right, let's two, go. one, go! Go, 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 go! All right, all right, oh, clutch. okay. Outside. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there Around. You go. Down Come the road. back. No! No! There you go. There you go. Start over. Right, start it off. Start it off. All right, let's go. Let's go. There you go. There you go. Outside, outside. Let's go. Girls are winning by a big lead. Come on. Come on. There we go. Go around right, the cone. Around the cone. Right here. Are working it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac. There, there, there you go. There you go. There you go. And there girls win. Perfect. We destroyed them, boys. Let's make some noise for the girls. It's all right, guys. Hey, it's okay. You tried, bro. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. If I'm being honest, they, they don't get a prize anyway. We're good. Wow, they got the can. They got a Starburst. They all three get to share one Starburst. How do y'all feel about that? <laughs> what? <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, thank y'all for uh, playing the thank game with us. Thank I think you that's all. it. You break Great souls. job, guys. Great job. Perfect. All right. All right. Okay. Hey, who's ready to worship? We, we got a little worship yeah! going. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Hey, would you stand to your feet? Come on down to the front. We're gonna worship.
what it represents and, and the juice and what it represents. Um, you know, his crushed body, his blood spilled out for us. It's something, it's a moment we really need to press into. You know, Pastor Chris talks about spiritual maturity and that's what we're praying for you guys. And this is our foundation of spiritual maturity. Everything we do, everything we see God do flows from this. And you know, his body was broken so that we could be forgiven of our sins and that's incredible. And he gave us access to his presence. But it, it, there's so much more to be found in the finished work of the cross. Um, it says, by his stripes we are healed. So not just our sins were forgiven, but our bodies are made whole. Not just when we die here. Our bodies can be made whole here. Our minds can be made whole here. And so I just wanna ask you tonight, what is it that you need to press into um, with the finished work of the cross? Is it that you just need to accept him as your savior? To know that your sins are forgiven? Do you need peace in your mind tonight? I think that's a big one for a lot of us in the house tonight is that when they place that crown of thorns on his head, it gave us peace of mind. He took that on so we could walk in fullness of peace of mind. We don't have to be bound by anxiety. We don't have to be bound by stress. We get to step into that. Healed bodies, you know, the finished work of the cross, I love that we're doing communion tonight because um, last weekend was Easter. Was it incredible or what? And I love, I just love, I love Easter, I love remembering what Jesus did, how he didn't just die, but he overcame the grave. Like, and here's the thing, if he can overcome the grave, anything is possible, period. Anything is possible. So what do you need to step into tonight? Can we believe wholeheartedly that anything is possible? And it happens by remembering the suffering, okay? I know sometimes we just so flippantly say like, Jesus died on the cross for you, Jesus died on the cross for you, which is so true, but what that, like that is huge, right? By his stripes, he was whipped, crown of thorns placed on his head, he carried that cross. And then he was, he was um, they nailed his hands and feet to a cross where then he, he suffered, you guys, for us. What other king does that? King of kings and Lord of lords. What other king says, I'll get up on that cross for us? And so we're about to pray and take this together. But as we do, I, I want us to ask the Lord, what are you showing me right now? What do I need to receive from you in the finished work of the cross? So let's peel back that first layer. And it says, um, the scripture says, this is, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take it together. Let's pray together and let's just seal what God's doing in our hearts right now in this moment. Lord, we just take a moment to lock eyes with you and to remember the suffering that you took so that we don't have to. By your stripes, we are healed. God, I pray that heal would invade, that healing would invade this space that we would step into all you have for us, healing of our bodies, healing um, in our bodies of our loved ones, healing of our mind, Lord Jesus, that we can walk in peace. God, that we can walk in authority because of the finished work of the cross. We are so grateful. Would you continue to speak to our hearts? Would you continue to remind our hearts of the significance of your death and the finished work of the cross and what it means for us, the authority that we have because what you did for us. What other king 
leaves his throne to hang on a cross. And we just sit in that. We remember it, God. We don't take it lightly and we'll never take it lightly. So God, would you just continue to speak to our hearts? Would you speak to us and remind us what we need to be encouraged today as we remember the finished work of the cross? In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's continue to worship.
much for this time that we get to come into your house and worship your name, Father. I pray a special blessing over the rest of this service. And everyone said, amen, amen. Thank you all so much for worshiping with us. You may be seated. What's up, North Rock students? We are so excited that you joined us tonight. If it's your first time, go ahead and scan that QR code on the screen or fill out a connection card and give it to a leaders to receive a free gift just for joining us tonight. Yes, and if you want to do something fun this summer, check out this video. discover your God-given purpose, then apply for the North Rock Internship. The North Rock Internship is from June 7th through August 4th, is on Tuesdays through Thursdays, is for all incoming freshmen, or if you just graduated high school. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. All right, let's continue with our Rally Night experience. Yeah! Hey, hey what's up, Rally Night? Y'all make some noise. Come on. I would scream with you, but I have no voice. Anybody else's allergies are just, like, wrecking them right now? Yeah. Am I the only one? I'm on so much, like, day quill and stuff. I don't even remember my name right now. My allergies have been wrecking me. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and forewarn you that I may be clearing my throat a lot. I may be sneezing a little bit up here, but we're going to get through this. Amen? We're going to get through this tonight. Y'all be praying for your boy up here because I am just everywhere. My throat's gone out, like, three times this weekend. I sounded like I was going through puberty all over again, like, Three days in a row is rough, man. It took me eight years just to go through puberty just to get here. Come on. Hey, uh, I wanted to share a couple of things. I know they've already highlighted on the VAs. Can I get a little bit of house lights? I just want to see all these beautiful people out here. There we go. What's up, y'all? Now I can see you. Come on. A couple of things I want to highlight. I know we already talked about it in the VAs. Uh, but first off, camp. Y'all, if you went to camp last year or the year before that, make some noise. Hey, don't miss out. Actually, we said we were going to end the early bird registration like two weeks ago, but we just had so many people signing up. I went ahead and just extended it. So listen to me. Listen, early bird registration is extended through tonight at midnight. After that, you lose that discount. So if you have not registered for camp, you need to register two nights so you can get that early bird special. If you have siblings that are finished sixth grade through 12th grade, they want to go to camp there is a sibling discount on top of the early bird discount. You guys, we have made it super easy to get registered, get signed up for camp. Do not miss out on that. It's going to be an incredible experience. Don't wait. Sign up tonight. Got it? Everybody say, got it. Got it. Second thing is internship. I'm going to be very quick with this. Hey, if you went through internship last year, the year before, will you just make some noise? Yeah. Actually, raise your hand. That helps me out a lot more. Just raise your hand. If you have questions about the internship, and listen, I want all of you to apply for the internship. I'll be out in the lobby taking signups. Find one of, keep your hands up, keep your hands up. Find one of these people and ask them questions. Internship is incredible. It's a great way to grow in your faith, leadership, but also make relationships. I think a lot of our students have stuck around because they went through internship. They got planted. Uh, we actually have people who we've just brought onto our rally night team because of the internship, because they grew and just found their gifting, found their purpose, and got plugged in. And so if that's you and you're ready for that, sign up for internship. I'll be out in the lobby ready to sign you up, and uh, we'd love to have you guys be a part of it. It's going to start in June, so we don't want you to miss out on that. That's all of the things I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, hey, I, I feel like there's just a lot of, I know my voice is one of the distractions, so um, I feel like there's just a lot of distractions tonight. I know you guys have empty communion cups and trash from the tacos and all that stuff. Um, I want to do this for a moment. I want us to pray, and we're just going to get our minds and our hearts right for tonight. We're going to get into a receiving posture, and all that means is we're going to say, God, whatever distractions there is, we're giving you access and freedom to move in this place and get rid of those, and we're going to get set on what you have for us tonight. So let's go, let's go ahead and bow our heads right now, right where you're at. Bow your heads. We're going to go ahead and remove distractions. If you've got something in your hands, go ahead and put it down. We don't need anybody moving around during the service. We're going to get focused. So, God, right now, we're giving you tonight. 
Thank you for being with us. Thank you for your presence that's here with us, God. Thank you so much that you would come and sit with us, God. We have done nothing to deserve your presence, but we're grateful for it tonight. God, I pray that this message is nothing from my mind, nothing from my feelings, nothing from my thoughts. It's all from you, God. It's all anointed by you, from you, for these students, because you love them so much, and you have such a great plan for them, God. God, I thank you that tonight we're going to walk out of here different, uh, not just for a change, just for the sake of a checklist, God, but a change because we're going to meet you, encounter you, and fall more in love with you tonight than ever before. We're believing that, we're declaring that, and we're going to go ahead and thank you and give you all the glory in advance in your son's name. And everybody said... Amen, amen. You can keep the house lights up. That's fine. I want to keep looking at them. Yep, good looking people, man. Come on, give it up for yourselves. Hey, so um, first off, that was such a powerful thing. And I wanted to share, listen, I know we celebrated Easter last year. And Easter is an annual thing that we celebrate. But can I tell you, please don't take what happened on the cross. And please don't take the empty tune as routine. Meaning, don't make that something just, man, that beautiful girl that did communion. Come on, somebody. Please don't take that as routine. That is just something that we do. That is a sacrifice, and it was the greatest thing that's happened in history. Because of that, just like Pastor said last week in Easter, the gap between us and God has been bridged forever. And we get access to our Father. We get access to be who he's called us to be, who he's created us to be, and be with him for eternity. But we don't have to wait for eternity to be with him. We get his presence right here and right now at 6th grade, 8th grade, 10th grade, 12th grade, wherever you're at, you get access to God through the cross. Don't make what we celebrated last week in a routine. Make it permanent. Reflect on that. Community is such a special thing. Um, and, and Micah had talked about spiritual maturity. And I want to hit back on this because, as always, God has been so faithful to us in the student community. And, and if you were here back in August, if you've been here since then, we've kind of hinted on this. But we've talked about how I felt like the word for the school year that God gave me back last summer was maturity. That this school year, the end of 2021 into early 2022, the school year that is about to end here in just a few weeks, I felt like God had told me that he was rising up and raising up mature leaders out of you guys. He wasn't going to 30-year-olds with college degrees. He wasn't you and people that have just been studying the Bible for a long time. He wanted you. And he was ready to raise you up right where you're at. And I want to celebrate with you because, again, God has been so faithful. I want to celebrate what that has looked like this school year alone since August. We have seen 136 students say yes to Jesus through our Rally Nights experiences. Just this semester alone, just from February to today, we still have a few more weeks of our small group semester. Just this semester alone, we have 132 unique individuals in a small group right now. 132 unique individuals in a small group. And then 91 students averaging serving on a weekend every single weekend. Can I tell you maturity, and I'm not talking about bodily maturity. I'm not talking about, you know, being smarter. I'm talking about growing in your faith. This is God being faithful to saying he is rising up the leaders right here where you're at. And that is an incredible thing. And so, you know, since we, we started that in August... Everything that we've done has been talking about that. All the series that we've done, all the talks that I've been giving, people coming up and sharing, small groups, we've just been diving into that. And so tonight, I want to keep going with that. I want to keep going with something that I believe that we need to grow in our faith, and that is truth. Everybody say truth. Look to your neighbor and say truth. Look to your second choice. It's awkward, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say truth. Truth, man. We need truth. I want to tell you... Um, I, I can't stand fake. I can't stand fake. Yeah. And here's, now, now listen, listen to me, listen. I'm going to say this, and I don't mean the people, because our enemy is not people. And Pastor Jonathan talked about this a few weeks ago. Our enemy is not people. Our enemy is Satan. And I can't stand people allowing the enemy or when they allow the enemy to manipulate things and lie to them and to see them over and over and over. And what I'm really sick and tired of is watching what I believe is the greatest generation ever walked the earth. You guys, teenagers, those a little bit younger than you, a little bit older than you. What I believe that God is doing, and I'm just sick and tired of watching them follow opinions and follow false narratives instead of sticking with the truth that God has instilled in you from, for, from his scripture. And I just believe we're in such a place in time where fake is just allowed to run crazy, y'all. 
And I just feel, and I'm going to take some ownership in this because being a part of the church, the big C church, churches around the world, I feel like instead of being truthful, we become tolerable. I feel like we're not standing on truth anymore. We're standing on, well, what's going to get people to like me? What's going to get more people in seats? What's going to get me reposted on Twitter and Instagram and, and Snapchat more? I'd rather have people tolerate me and I'd rather tolerate what they're doing instead of standing firm on truth. And I'm going to tell you something. When I get to heaven, it's not, God's not going to ask me, well, how many people liked you? He's going to say, how many people did you bring to me? Listen, I would rather stand on this stage every rally night and stand in front of you on the weekends and in small groups and give you the truth and maybe you don't like me a little bit than get to heaven and say, well, listen, they liked me on earth, but they didn't make it to heaven. If I'm doing all this, but I don't see any of you in heaven, I failed. It doesn't matter how many likes I get and retweets I get. No matter how much amening I get, if you're not standing before God with me, entering into paradise, this is for nothing. And as a church, we've got to get, as the body, and I keep saying the church, as the body, as followers of Christ, and those trying to find our way in this mess of a society that we're in today, we've got to have truth. We've got to have something that we can stand on, that doesn't move, that doesn't shake, that doesn't change. That doesn't go with a narrative. It goes with scripture and it goes with, with God's word. And so tonight is all about truth. Tonight, we're going to find truth. We're going to fact check everything. And we're going to take it back to what we can stand on and build our lives upon. As I think about truth and I think about fake things, I remember as a kid, um, I used to go to my grandparents' house all the time. We lived really close to my grandparents. And as a kid, some of your grandparents is just something special. It's something that I miss. I, I kind of took advantage of it, took it for granted growing up. It's something that I miss a lot. I only have one grand, grandparent left alive, and, it, and I look back, and I miss all those times. But I remember uh, my dad's parents, they, they had a pool, and we would go over there a lot, especially in the summer, and we would swim a lot. And my dad's parents, my, my grandparents on that side, were very well off. They did very well for themselves. And everything in their house, I was not allowed to touch. It was one of those houses. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, we would walk in, and, and I would go to reach for something. The parents would be like, duh, 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 duh. right? You get your hand slapped or something like that. And so I just knew, you know, don't touch things in their house and, you know, don't break stuff. But I remember this one time. I don't know why I remember this. But um, I remember we were swimming one day. And, you know, when you're swimming, you get really hungry. How many swimmers we got? Like, you swim for a team or something like that? Yeah, all you, like, really fit people. You're making me so mad. You swim, and you're just stay in really good shape. But when you swim, you get hungry. And you can eat like anything. And so I remember being really young one day, and we had a lot of family over, and we were swimming. And uh, I got really hungry. And so I went inside to figure out what was, uh, what was out for me to eat. And, you know, obviously I'm not allowed to touch things, so I can't pull things out. You know, I don't want to go in the fridge because I don't know what's in there. I don't know what I'm allowed to eat. And so I'm just looking around. And I remember there was this room. It was like a foyer or like an entry room, you know what I'm talking about, in your home where you kind of just... You first walk in, you can hang your coats and stuff like that. And uh, they had this table that we only ate at for really nice meals. It was one of those special tables with special plates, um, special meaning Chris don't touch. But I remember there was always fruit laid out on this table that no one ever ate. And I'm just one of those people, like, if there's food, I'm going to eat, right? Like, it's an easy concept. If there's food out, I can eat it. So I went over to this table with this fruit that's always out there. There's apples and grapes, and I love grapes. And I went to grab the fruit, and it was really hard to pull off of the, uh, I guess like the vine or whatever, I don't know, the twig. And I went to pull it, and it wouldn't come off. And I'm like, this is ridiculous, but I was so hungry, I was determined. If y'all know me, when I'm after something, I'm going to win. And so I snatched this grape off, and I'm about to eat it, and I noticed that this grape feels different than other grapes. It feels like, um, like waxy, and you know how when you squeeze grapes, they bust, right? And they make a mess. And I squeezed this grape, and it didn't make a mess. But I thought, well, maybe this is just rich people grapes. Like, I don't know. Maybe, like, there's a special store that rich people shop at. That you know, I grew up at Piggly Wiggly and Winn-Dixie. Like, I don't know. And so I was like, these are rich people grapes. So I bet they taste really good. And I took a bite, and I realized real quick, they're fake grapes. These are fake grapes. And then I'm angry. Because, again, I hate fake stuff. And then I'm angry. Who would put fake stuff out for a kid to eat? What kind of ridiculous person does that to a child? And then I'm mad for my grandparents. Somebody sold you fake stuff. I'm angry. I'm getting mad right now. I was so upset. I went to my Nana and Papa, and I was like, somebody sold you fake stuff. And they laughed at me. And I was angry because they laughed at me. That's why I remember it. I was so traumatized by anger. 
But I was so upset, and, and they had to, you know, tell me, they're not for eating. They're, they're just fake. They're just there, just for show. You're not meant to eat them. They're just fake. But I hate fake things. But they were out, and they were accessible, and anybody could get them. And I want to tell you, we have a lot of fake things that are accessible to us today. We have a lot of things that are laying out. They look okay. They look like we can ingest them. They look like we can partake in them. But they're fake. They're fake things. They're not good for you. They're not going to satisfy you like the real things will. There's so many fake things that are out. There's so many fake things that are out there and available to us. And I want, again, I want what's real. I want what's true. And, and I, I share this with a couple of times. Um, actually, this, this, this is a whole other year. But I'm, I'm, I'm on 11 years of following Jesus. And I've learned there's nothing fake about Jesus. Everything he says, everything he does, everything his word shares, everything about him, I can trust and I can stand on. I can eat that. I can partake of that because it's real and it's going to do something for me. And it brings me great things. And so there's a verse I wanted to share, a verse for tonight that we're going to lean into is John 8, 31 and 32. And it says to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus is teaching. And only a few of them are really listening. Only a few of them are really keying in on what he was saying. In verse 31, Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. If you hold on to what I say, you're really those that follow me because you believe me and you trust me. Verse 32, he says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We need truth because we need freedom. We need truth because there's so much crap out there that holds us away from experiencing what we celebrated last week that Jesus came and died for us to experience. There's so much life and there's so much promise and so much purpose that we're supposed to have and everything false around us, everything fake around us holds us back from that. But when we have the truth, we have freedom. Again, I'm all about finding truth. I'm a very black and white person. Gray area is just not for me. I have to know it's either this or it's that. It's either right or it's wrong. It's either real or it's fake. This drove people around me crazy growing up because I was always questioning and always analyzing everything because I want the truth. I want the real thing. I want to experience the real things. I want the truth about everything. I told you a couple months ago, I'm like still in the rabbit hole of the Kanye and Kim thing. I can't get over it. I'm just still there. Nobody's talking about it anymore. I'm still there. I haven't found the truth out, right? Chris Rock and Will Smith, what the heck happened? Like, I've watched all the videos and I still can't figure it out. You should let somebody slap you like that? What are we doing? You laughed at it, now you're not laughing. What just happened? What is true? What is real about this? Now I'm in the whole Johnny Depp situation. I'm like on Instagram, like on YouTube clips. It's like midnight. I'm just watching these things. I want the truth. I want the truth. I want to know what's really going on because I'm tired of being tricked. And I'm tired of being manipulated. And like I said, y'all, we have a real enemy of truth. And it's not the people that are put in front of us. It's the enemy. He hates the truth. It started back in the very beginning, Adam and Eve. He told Eve, hey, why don't you eat of the fruit? Well, God said we can't do that. And here's, here's the enemy. Did God really say that? Let me twist. Let me twist this. People are not our enemy. We have a real enemy. But I also want to share with you tonight the truth is not your enemy. People who present the truth are not your enemy. Paul writes this in Galatians because what he was saying, people didn't want to accept because they didn't like it. Because it means we have to look inside and realize maybe I'm not perfect and maybe what I want and maybe what I desire is not what's best for me. And he says, listen, I'm not your enemy because I bring you the truth. I want to share it tonight. I want to lead you to the truth. And I'm going to dive into three ways of how we can test and know that God's word is absolute truth. But I, 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 I want to preface this, I'm going to ask you tonight to not be reactive, be receptive. Don't be reactive tonight, be receptive. Because we hear things sometimes and it triggers something in us. When I first started following Jesus, when I first started studying scripture and getting into his word, a lot of that stuff was hard to swallow. Things that I had to change, things that I had to shift, thoughts that I had, things that I wanted to do, I had to realize those are things that I don't want anymore. But I want to tell you, just like Pastor talked about this morning, it's not that God is trying to keep you from something. He's trying to lead you to something. He's not trying to take you away from fun. He's trying to keep you from getting hurt. 
He's trying to keep you from getting lost. And so let's jump into this. We're going to talk about three ways of how we know that God's word is absolute truth. And I want you to take notes. They're all going to be on the screen that you can write down. Because Jesus says if we hold true to him, we'll find truth. So how do we know that his teachings, how do we know that the word of God is absolute truth? The first thing we know and how we can test it and know that God's word is absolute truth is this. Truth can't change. Write that down. Pull out your phone, put it somewhere, highlight it. Put it where you can see it over and over. Truth can't change. If it's true, it cannot change. Two plus two will always be four. If I got two water bottles and I add two more, I got four water bottles. Right? George Washington will always be the first president of the United States. No matter how big of shoes that I wear, no matter how much yoga I do, I'm always stuck at six foot. I could lie. I can tell the doctor to add another inch. I will always be six foot. Truth cannot change. Facts cannot change. Truth cannot change because it's absolute. It doesn't have to change. It is what it is. So how do we see this with Jesus and his teaching? Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus, it tells us Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is good news for us. I want to tell you the same Jesus that died on that cross 2,000 years ago. The same Jesus who made that decision, even when he was tempted to not to, even when he was struggling in the garden, fretting over the pain and what he was about to endure. The same Jesus that full of grace and mercy is the same Jesus sitting on the throne today loving you. It's good for us, and it brings us freedom that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Truth cannot change. It doesn't have to change. Truth isn't trying to fit some kind of agenda. It doesn't have to squeeze itself in or manipulate itself. Truth cannot change. The word of God will never change. I've been reading it for 12 years now, 11 years now. People have been reading it for thousands of years. Guess what? It's never changed because it's truth. Build your life on something that doesn't change. Truth does not change. The second way we know that it's true is that it proves itself true. We can trust the word of God. We can trust the teaching of Jesus because it proves itself true. Proverbs 30 verse 5 says, Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Truth always finds a way to reveal itself. As a kid growing up, I don't know if your parents do this, but my parents would always tell me, listen, you might as well tell me the truth to begin with because I'm going to find out. Teachers would always tell me that. You might as well tell me what really happened because eventually I'm going to find out, usually because one of my friends would, like, snitch on me. I, not great friends, but <laughs> shout out to all the homies in Alabama. <laughs> truth reveals itself. When I would tell a lie to my parents, I kept having to come up with more and more lies and eventually would get myself in a box that I have to just keep lying and lying and lying. When I would tell the truth, I didn't have to worry about it. Why? Because it eventually would come out that it's true. Even things I said to my parents years and years ago, they're coming up today and still telling me, yeah, I found out you're actually telling the truth about that. Yeah, I told you. Truth reveals itself. Truth will always reveal itself. We see this in Jesus' teaching. Listen, Jesus was prophesied all throughout the Old Testament. There were stories after stories. People were saying, listen, there's a Savior coming. He's going to be born of a virgin. We celebrate that at Christmas. Mary being conceived by the Holy Spirit, giving birth as a, vir or giving birth as a virgin to Jesus. We see that in Psalms 118. It talks about that the Savior, the Messiah, would be rejected. We just celebrated that last week. He was rejected and crucified. Scripture reveals itself to be true over and over and over. I was reading this the other day, and it's so crazy because Scripture also reveals things that are coming true later in life. Something written 2,000 years ago, 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love. Unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. Paul wrote this letter 2,000 years ago. If you would have asked me and if I'd never read this, I would have said he wrote this a year ago. It's constantly revealing itself to be true. Trust something that reveals itself truth. 
Don't trust something that's constantly having to change. Don't trust something that's constantly having to be put in a box. Well, we'll figure it out later. We'll figure it out later. Truth reveals itself. Jesus always reveals himself to be true. You can stand firm on his teachings. You can stand firm on the word of God because it constantly reveals itself to be true. And then the last part, and this is something I, I really want you to hone in on. The third thing, way of, that we can know that God's word is truth is that it's from a trusted source with a good intention. It's from a trusted source with a good intention. I want to tell you tonight, the word of God is not about an agenda. The word of God is not some kind of narrative that's being pushed. There's a lot of things that I've just learned and I'll accept it as fact and I realize it was because somebody wanted something from me or because this was trying to get me to do this, financial agenda, you know, whatever it was. There's all these different narratives that are being pushed and, and for a moment this is truth and then three years later it'll change and it'll be something else and then it'll be something else. But I want to tell you, the word of God is from a trusted source because it's from God himself. And, and, and this is what I want you to catch. The word of God is not trying to fit a narrative. The word of God is meant to lead you to a man named Jesus. The word reveals us and leads us to Jesus. I want to share something from John 5, and I want you to catch this. This is Jesus teaching. And he says, I have a testimony weightier than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I'm doing, they testify that the Father has sent me. Again, it's revealing itself to be true. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You've never heard his voice nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you. For you do not believe the one he sent. You don't trust me. You're not taking this as truth. Listen, you study the scriptures diligently because you think in them you have eternal life. He says, these are the very scriptures that testify about me. You're reading about me, but you won't accept that it's about me. You're all about fitting some kind of agenda or some kind of narrative. He says that you refuse to come to me to have life. I want to tell you, when you read the word of God, when you read it and when you get into it, we find it as we follow it. Listen, you got to stick with it. This isn't something, just open it. Well, I don't understand it, so I'm going to give up. No, 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 keep going. Because the word of God continues to lead us to Jesus. It leads us back to Jesus over and over again. Every time I, we, I read the word, no matter what I'm reading about, no matter what I'm learning, no matter if it's Old Testament, New Testament, the beginning, the middle, the end, it all leads me back to finding Jesus. It all leads us back to Jesus. You can trust the word of God because he's not trying to get you to form some narrative. He's not trying to push some ideology on you. In fact, he's saying, listen, I just, I want you to be my son. Because in him, you'll find his truth. In him, you'll have a life that you can build a foundation on. I love this verse of Jesus, my last verse. John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The word became flesh. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son from the father, full of grace. And listen to this, and truth. The word became flesh. The word became flesh. Jesus came and lived out the word. Why? Because he's not trying to push an agenda. He's not trying to push a narrative. He came to lead you back to him. That's why Jesus came. We read scripture sometimes and we get so lost because what well, sounds like a bunch of rules. No, Jesus came. I didn't come to abolish it. I came to fulfill it. I didn't come for you to be perfect. I came for you to be mine. I didn't come to confuse you. I came to bring you closer to me. And even when we didn't understand it, even when we still resented it, even when we still didn't follow it, even when we still fought it, he said, that's okay. I'm still gonna go to the cross so I can be with you and continue to teach you and continue to show you that you can build truth on me. I said a little while ago at the beginning, I said that when we follow his teachings, we know his truth. And we know that his truth will set me, free, set me free. Can you four come up here? Yeah, you four right here on the front. I want you to hold these by the hook. <clears throat> See, you grab one. Okay. 
Here's what happens. When we don't know truth, like I said, we'll just tolerate everything. We'll accept everything. And Jesus said, when you know truth, you'll actually have freedom. But when I don't know truth and I'm just accepting everything, maybe I'll accept whatever the enemy says about my identity. No, stay there. I can't go anywhere. Now I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Whatever the narrative is telling me that it is. I'm stuck there. When I accept what the world says, maybe about relationships. When I accept the narrative of, of the enemy about relationships, don't move. I can't move. I'm bound. When I accept what the world says about my purpose. When I accept what the world tells me about what to think or who I am or whose I am, I'm stuck. I'm stuck wherever they take me. But when I see Jesus and I meet him and I realize that everything he is is truth, it doesn't change. It proves itself to be true and it leads me back to him. I'm free. And I can chase where he's calling me and where he's leading me to. Can I tell you, you guys can have a seat. Take those with you. Thank you so much. Can I tell you tonight, I am so sick and tired of watching again who I believe is the greatest generation be taken by where the enemy wants to take you. Falling for all the crap that's out there. You'll eat fake grapes all day long thinking, oh, maybe this is just what it's supposed to be. But there's truth. John 10, 10, Jesus says, listen, the enemy, the enemy, the one who spreads those lies and manipulates the truth, he came to steal, to kill and destroy. People are literally killing themselves because they haven't found truth. Because they're accepting who they want to be accepted, so I'll change everything about me. I'll change and I'll just accept what purpose is. I'll change what identity is. I'll change everything about me. Because I think that's what I'm supposed to have. But Jesus continues in that verse and says, but I came so you can have life and life abundant. There is freedom when you find truth. There is freedom when you stand on truth. There is freedom when your life continues to be built on truth. The only thing true in this world is the word of God. Hear that tonight. I don't care who tells you anything else. I don't care what your, what your you know, leaders tell you. Hopefully they're leading you back to that. What other adults are telling you, what TV's telling you, what movies are telling you, what politicians are telling you. They come in with a big following. We'll follow anybody on TikTok because, dear God, we want 15 million followers. I don't care what they say. The only truth in this world is the word of God. Because it's the only thing that cares about you being free. I want to give you an opportunity to find that truth tonight for the first time. So I'm going to ask you guys to do this. Will you just bow your heads and close your eyes? No distractions. Nobody looking around. This is a holy moment when we're going to let God do what only he can do. If you're in here tonight and you need to build your life on truth, you're just like me and you hate fake things. You're tired of being lied to, manipulated. You're ready to build on something real and solid and honest that will continue for the rest of your life. If you're ready tonight and say, man, I don't, I don't know truth or maybe I've heard about it, but I'm ready to go all in with it because I want my life to be free and not bound by everything else. If that's you and you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time, I'm going to say a prayer in just a moment. Asking that this moment forward, Jesus would just fill us. We're going to give our lives to him. We're going to submit to him. We're going to give him full control so that way we can be built on truth. If that's you, first time or first time in a long time, and you want to be included in that prayer, do me a favor. I'm not going to ask you to do anything. Just lift your hand up right where you're at. Just lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Just lift your hands right where you're at. Thank you. Just keep them up. A few more minutes. Thank you. A few more minutes. Anybody else? A few more seconds. A few more minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Any more? Any more? Just one more second. I know there's some just standing on the edge. I promise you this is not about anybody looking at you or being judged. This is just you saying yes to God and going all in with what he has. Anybody else? I'm 
gonna say a prayer. I'm gonna ask you just to pray this along with me. You can pray in your heart. You can pray it out loud if you want to. But I'm gonna pray that God would fill you with his spirit, that God would fill you with his truth. And from this moment on, he would remind you that you are sealed and embraced by him. God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Thank you that you are true. God, it's not just what you do, it's who you are. You can't lie. You can't be deceived. You can't be manipulated. And God, you don't do that to us. God, thank you that you didn't ask us to figure it out on our own, God. Your word became flesh. You gave everything for us, God. I'm I'm so thankful that your son died on the cross so that we can experience you here before eternity, but also that we get a whole eternity with you, God. God, for those that raise their hand right now, God, I'm asking you that you would seal them. Let them know and embrace them that they are yours. And your word says that those who are in my hands cannot be snatched from me. God, that their minds would be full of truth, their heart full of truth, that they would find and, and sift through all the lies of this world and all the lies of the enemy to find you in everything. God, lead them, love them. God, from this moment forward, let them know that they are standing on a firm foundation that cannot be shaken. Lives are built on you now, God, and we're so grateful that we thank you and we give you all the glory for what you're doing tonight, what you will continue to do, God. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Amen.